Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. Over the past few episodes we've gone ahead and implemented our all episodes fragment here and specifically with the Paging 3 library. So if you missed it, go ahead and check it out. It's a pretty good example of how Paging 3 is useful and then how we can actually even add separators or in our case like different headers for the different sections here of the different seasons. So there's a lot to cover there and uh, it was pretty useful and definitely easier than paging two. So if you're interested, go ahead and check it out. But in today's episode, I want to just talk about something I came across recently inside of the uh, Material Design 1.2.0 library. And that's specifically a shapeable image view. Now, if we take a look at this page here, it seems like we have an image view right here that has a little bit of a shape to it. It has these rounded corners, right? And there's actually a little bit of elevation, so it looks like it's a, a, a beautiful image view. However, if we take a look at the XML here, we're kind of wrapping this image view right here inside of a particular card view. And this is, you know, a pretty standard thing that you can do to apply certain attributes to an image view without having to come up with either a custom implementation or make use of some third-party library or something like that. We can see here the attribute card corner radius is the reason that, that those corners are rounded. And if we go ahead and double that from 16 to 32, we'll see these corners get a little bit uh, more bubbly in a sense, right? And then card elevation is doing the actual elevation for the element. So it's kind of two views acting in one. However, the shapeable image view combines this, or doesn't combine this, but gives you the ability to uh, modify certain attributes about the image view that are normally somewhat reasonably sought after and pretty common. So let's go ahead and just get this XML down to just one image view and then we'll go from there. So we're just going to add these constraints here and then the margin top as well we're going to add uh, to this image view and then otherwise we will just cut this out and paste it right inside here. Now if we take a look at this little preview on the side we just have one image view, it's square, it's 220 by 220, this makes a lot of sense here. But what we can do here is we can actually change this to be a shapeable image view. You can see that it's part of the material package here, and still no changes here. But we can modify the specifically the corners however we want. So let's go ahead and bounce over to our themes.xml and define a particular style here that we're going to use without diving too deep into themes and styles because I don't want to take the focus away from this video. Um, styles or themes is a place that you can define specific attributes about uh, either a, a family of views or a particular view or basically even attribute a particular styling of, of something like text or specific buttons that you want to change and let's say dialogues or something along those lines. So whenever you want to get in the nitty gritty and super specific, sometimes you actually have to implement a style and you have to override certain attributes in the style so that it looks exactly how you want it. It also provides basically like a use of variables where you can then you know, reuse certain styles in certain elements so that things continue to look the same throughout your application. And if you update the style, then all of those attributes or all of those views in your project also update. So I'm just going to call this here the shape appearance overlay. Uh, we'll just call, call it simple Morty here. And then there's another attribute that we can set here, the parent, and we're just going to leave that blank here. And then we've defined uh, basically a name and a parent for our style again blank, but we can go inside here and we can define specific things So a very common task or a very common end goal is to end up with a rounded image view So we can go ahead and accomplish this with the shapeable image view here And inside of the style we can define a particular name and There's going to be a bunch of attributes that we can override here and there are a tremendous amount But we really only care about the corner size the corner size family and maybe even getting specific to the uh, different you know bottom right versus top left or something like that but corner size here is just going to apply this attribute to all of the all four of the corners and if we make it 50 percent here that will accomplish this rounding so we will apply this particular shape appearance overlay to our view here again this one right here shape appearance overlay simple morty 
and right when we click it we see that there is a little bit of things being cut off we see this little black background or dark gray background but we see our image view coming through as a particular circle which is fantastic so once this is up and running again we can click on our little character to get to the details and we can clearly see that there is a circle image view here now the fun part about this is that we've defined a, sp a particular corner size to be 50%, right? Let's say we wanted to change it to 10%. This is in relation to the view. So we can actually now accomplish that rounded corner, a 10% rounding right there. Looks a little bubbly, which it did before, but something along the lines of a 5%, I think would look pretty good as far as material goes, right? Yeah. But point being, you can change this particular value and now you're changing the corner radius and we don't have to have this view wrapped inside of another view that could handle rounding the corners for us right out of the box. So this gives us complete control over the actual image view, which is just fantastic news. Now outside of the corner size attribute, like I said, let's comment that one out and then we can add a particular one. So if we say corner size, let's go top left here and then let's apply the 15% that was there and rerun things, we'll see that we actually have one rounded corner and then the other three are just hard edges like they normally would be. So we can come up with a handful of different appearances on this image view that you know could really accomplish whatever you would want or whatever would look good for the project. So other than top left, we can do a little, let's go with bottom right here and we'll leave it both at 15 and we'll get this little leaf teardrop kind of effect, which, you know, can look pretty sweet in certain applications. Uh, maybe if we increase this up a little bit to 35%, make it a little bit larger of a rounding, we'll kind of, yeah, there you go, start to really fall into place there with the making it look like a leaf or whatever. So outside of this rounded corner that we've accomplished here, there is another corner family or another corner type, I guess. Nope, family is what it's called that we can actually change here. So if we say corner family here, there are gonna be two attributes, cut and rounded. And so the rounded is obviously this little view, but then the cut actually just cuts straight through. So I guess where the rounding would start and end on the corner, they just draw a straight line from point A to point B and just cut it completely out. So you kind of get this interesting looking uh, you know, view or, or, or these corners. And specifically, like we had a circle before when we did 50%, when we go ahead with the cut, we end up with a diamond, which definitely can be useful, especially as certain like accent image views and stuff like that if you need to do so. Again, we have full control over any of the corners here. So if we were to say uh, corner family top left, we can go ahead and just add that in and modify just the top left one, which, huh. That looks very interesting, but essentially all of these other ones are rounded because it's 50%. That's why we get this circle and then this one is cut. Uh, so if we were to change that to maybe 15%, it might be a little bit easier to see. But we'll see that we basically have full control over all four corners in not only the radius size that they have, but also the cut angle or the cut family that they also have. So you can come up with any combination that you would like with this style here. And then every time you apply this style to an image view, specifically the shapeable image view, your view would look exactly the same. Well, at least the borders and you know stuff like that. The contents will change, of course. Um, I know before we had elevation, so we can also very easily just say Android elevation. I'm going to put 10 dp to make it quite absurd and so that you can see it. But we'll see this little drop shadow coming in right around the image. So, you know, maybe we could dial that back a little bit, but point is, is that we can actually condense these two different layouts or these two different uh, elements that we had working together into a single element that looks like this. I'm just going to clean this up really quickly because that looks a little ridiculous. All right, there we go. I've just defined 10% as our corner size and the family for all four corners to be cut. So, you know, it looks a little different. It looks a little futuristic. I feel like it fits in with our Rick and Morty application here. Um, other than that, we can actually add a stroke color and a stroke width to this. So let's go ahead and put a little 1DP border around here. And we're going to use the stroke color of the color on surface here. And I'll show you why in a second. But if we go ahead and rerun it, 
If you look closely here, the edges of this image view seem to have not the same stroke width as the little part that's in the corner here. And so for my experimenting, all you have to do is add the padding of the same stroke width, you know, 1dp stroke width, 1dp padding, and then when you rerun things, everything looks uniform all the way around. This does seem to be the case for both the cut corners and the rounded corners, so I'm not sure if that's just like a little hiccup or a little bug, or there's something else that I'm missing, but it should be pretty easy to just put one, you know, put the same padding that you have uh, as the stroke width, and then everything just looks uniform and great here. Uh, other than that, we kind of get this nice little border, and then the reason that we went ahead and added our stroke color as an attribute here for the color on surface is so that when we flip this application over to dark mode, we have this white border here. It's tough to see, uh, but there is a white border instead of it just being black. So again, it just kind of pops and it works, and it's just part of the design, I guess, for the dark theme support. However, we did lose this attribute up here, uh, this little gender thing. So if we take a look at the model character, I think it's called header, yeah, details header. I'm sure that this has some hard-coded value. Yeah, so let's just do tint of the color on surface. And then if we rerun things here, we should see that pop white. Very good. And then if we flip back to dark mode, it should be in black. Yep. And so now this page has full dark mode support, even though it was pretty close before. But uh, yeah, that's about it. So if you enjoyed this video and you've made it this far, please do give a like. Let me know that the content is useful and that you are enjoying it. Also, if you notice you made it this far and you're not subscribed and you've learned a thing or two, I'd appreciate a subscription to the channel. And also so that you don't miss out on any of the new content that comes out as we continue to build out our application here for this Rick and Morty app. And that's it for me, guys. So thank you so much. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a good rest of your day. Bye.